Hi, so this is uh, an example uh, with vector spaces. So this is you know, part of my Formalising Mathematics 2022 course. Um, and I haven't made a sheet here because somehow this is one fairly tricky question, but this is a question uh, that I got from a student. Uh, this was part of a student are making projects for me and one student uh, decided they were going to formalise the Steinitz exchange lemma uh, and they started on it and then they decided they weren't going to formalise the Steinitz exchange lemma and they went off and formalised something else instead. Um, and this is the form uh, in, which, in which they set it up. And uh, I thought I would come back to this and uh, show them how to do it. So uh, a student that wanted to do Steinitz exchange lemma, uh, here's how I would uh, attempt to prove the Steinitz exchange lemma in Lean. So before we embark on that, I should perhaps say how Lean does um, vector spaces. Uh, so the axioms for a vector space um, don't ever use inverses, right? We normally talk about vector spaces over a field, uh, but the axioms for a vector space don't ever use inverses. And so all the axioms make sense, make sense over an arbitrary ring. And uh, a vector space over a ring is called a module. Uh, and so in Lean, the way you do vector spaces is you to uh, you use this language of modules. I mean, we could just define, you know, we could put, we could define vector space to equal module. Uh, you know, that might keep some people happy. But uh, the way we let V be a vector space over the field K is we, we let K be a field and we let V be an abelian group. Uh, and then we let V be a module over K, which just means, you know, let K act on V and satisfy the rest of the vector space axioms. Uh, so that says let V be a vector space over K and we're going to prove a theorem about vector spaces over K and uh, we're going to prove the Steinitz exchange lemma uh, and I don't know where, I don't know what the source of the student uh, was for Steinitz exchange lemma but one thing they've done very well uh, is that uh, they've observed that this has got nothing to do uh, with finite dimensionality and nothing to do with a finite list of vectors and you remove one of those vectors in that finite list. The Steinitz exchange lemma is a very general statement. I mean, it's used you know, principally in the finite dimensional case uh, to change bases to other bases or whatever. But the actual lemma itself doesn't need any finite dimensionality hypotheses. Uh, and this is the way the student formalised it. They said, let V be a vector space over K, uh, and let X be a subset of V. And suppose we've got a vector U in the span of X, uh, but U is not in the span of X minus V for some v and x. Uh, and then the idea is that uh, if y is a new set, it's x minus v, and then we'll throw in u. Uh, the claim is that the span of x and the span of y are the same. So you see this is the kind of lemma that you need uh, when you're manipulating a basis. You kind of take an element out. Uh, you want to change a basis to another basis, you take an element out and then you put another element in. It's also used in uh, matroid theory. Uh, but uh, I won't be talking about that now. Uh, for those of you that are actually watching this within a, a couple of days of me uploading it, there is a talk on Matroid Theory in Lean this coming Thursday uh, by Elena Gusakov. But anyway, uh, so th this, this is the Steinitz exchange lemma as formalised by the student. Um, and this is kind of, this is kind of a bit messy to deal with. You've got, you, you see, you never really have X. We have X here. But most of the talk is not about x, it's about x diff v, uh, x with v removed. And you see v is not an element of capital V, v is an element of capital X. And so that causes even sort of more confusion here. If you look at, uh, if you look at the goal here, uh, then we see we don't have a v, we have an up arrow v, uh, because v is in up arrow x. You see x, uh, v should really be an element of capital V, which is an assume, you know, assumed it's an element of X, but we just have V an element of X, which isn't really ideal. So here were my, uh, let's, let's put that there and let's pin this. Uh, uh, here are my, here were my thoughts about this. You should maybe, uh, we should maybe let W, uh, let's just let W be V as it were. Uh, but you know, but, but W, uh, but W of type capital V and instead of W in X. And then you ask yourself whether we need X anyway. I mean, we have X. In fact, we can, you see, if, 
if V was an arbitrary element of capital V, you see U is in the submodule spanned by X, but U is not in the submodule spanned by X minus V. So we actually know that V is in X anyway. Uh, so we don't even really need to assume that V is in X. And then we have another X div up arrow V. I find this is, because X div up arrow V, this means X with V removed. It somehow seems to be showing up more than X. So I want to let Z uh, be kind of X minus V, because that seems to be the more fundamental object somehow. Uh, so we'll get back to Steinitz exchange later. So let's uh, let's let's do variables. Uh, okay, W of type V, and um, and let's have Z uh, set V. And so Z is going to be X minus V, and so that means X. Uh, so X is kind of Z uh, union. Uh, X is Z union V. Uh, but there's a but we we when we're union with a singleton, i.e. x is a, there's an insert. In, we can insert v into z. So here's what I you see. I think this should be called Steinitz exchange primed, really. So lemma Steinitz exchange. Uh, here's what I think Steinitz exchange should say. Uh, so we have h u uh, is that u is in the span. Uh, Oh, of X, you know, we don't have an X anymore, so this X is now what? Insert V, Z. Uh, and that didn't work. Oh, insert R, 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 R. It's insert W, Z, of course. Let's put a W there. Uh, and let's have H, N, U. We might as well just copy this. H, N, U says that U is not in the span of... So now X, diff V is just Z. Uh, there. Uh, and then we've got H, Y says that Y, I mean, we don't really need the hypothesis that Y is something. Uh, so Y will be X diff V, which is Z, Z union U. So Y, so Y is kind of insert U, uh, Z, it seems to me. Uh, and we don't need that as a hypothesis. Uh, and so the conclusion will be uh, submodule dot span K now x is what? x is insert insert w into z and I claim this equals submodule dot span uh, the k span of y which is insert insert u z there. Uh, so this I think will be easier to prove. Uh, I mean I just think it will be because we don't have to ever worry about set theoretic differences and worrying about the you know is x div v equal to x or not well it depends if v is in x and v is this funny up arrow v i think this is a let's let's unpin what i had pinned i think this is just a cleaner statement uh great so how do we prove that two submodules so let's just see what it says so z is a random set uh, and then we've got two elements u and w and U is not in the span of Z, but U is in the span of uh, Z with W inserted. And then the claim is that uh, the span of Z with W inserted equals the span of Z with U inserted. And that will somehow, uh, it, it shouldn't be too difficult to deduce that. Uh, it shouldn't be di too difficult to deduce what the student wrote uh, from this. And this is hopefully easier to prove. Uh, so let's go. So let's X to X, right? We've got to, uh, we've got to prove that two submodules Submodule dot span. This is the vector space generated by this set, right? Uh, so let's do x to x. Uh, we've got to prove that x is in one if and only if x is in the other. And I guess, I mean, maybe at some point we should start thinking about the, what's the maths proof. Um, I think we're going to have to split it, right? One way is maybe easier. So u is in the submodule spanned by w. Uh, and so that means... If u is in the submodule span by I mean z is sorry u is in the submodule span by this and z is certainly in the submodule span by this because z is in this. Uh, so one inclusion is going to be relatively straightforward, uh, and the other inclusion we we never used h n u. The other inclusion will have to use h n u somehow. So what didn't we? We need to prove that 
the submodule spanned by W and Z is contained in the submodule spanned by U and Z. So we know that Z is going to be contained in that. So the issue is simply why is W in the submodule spanned by uh, U and Z? That's what it's going to boil down to. Uh, and why is this? So let's make these comments now. So uh, everything is pretty formal. So to prove, so we know that Z uh, is a subset of the span uh, of the span of whatever W union Z. Uh, and we also know, and U is in that span as too. And by hypothesis, and by H U, uh, U is also in that span of W union Z. Uh, and so that means so so the span of the span of Z uh, union U uh, will certainly be a subset of the span of uh, well I'll put it the other way around the span of U union Z uh, is certainly a subset of the span of W union Z. There, so that should be straightforward. Uh, so we go, we are clearly going to be proving, and now the other way we need to think. So we are going to split, right? Uh, and and so now we have two goals. And which way? This way is the way we haven't done. So this way we've done now. So this should be this should be nice and easy. So let's intro. Uh, let's intro H. Uh, do you know what? Do you, do, I don't think we... Maybe we don't want to do x to x. Do we want to do... Uh, maybe we want to apply... Uh, lattice antisim. Le antisim. Would that be a nice... Let's do it, let's do it like this. Uh, instead of split. Uh, now we've got to prove the equality. So there we go. We've got to prove the equalities in both directions. So this would be a nice. This would be a nice way to do it. So how do you prove that the span of something is a subset of something else? Uh, we could write. So though, the, I I want to say that the span is a subset of some submodule. If and only if the thing, uh, the thing that we're the thing that we're generating the span. Yeah. The span of X is a subset of this, if and only if X is a subset of this. And that would be called span LE or, so, or span LE if. Oh, it'll be called submodule dot. Let me, let's open submodule there. And now let's rewrite span LE or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So span LE, great. So now we just have to prove that this insert U is a subset of this. Uh, and now do we have insert subset? Is that a thing? Oh man, we've got finset insert subset. Oh, but not set insert subset. That's a shame. Uh, hard luck. So maybe we should prove that. So this should really be in Lean's Maths Library. Lemma set dot insert subset. So what's going on here? I have X some random type. Uh, and I have A in X and uh, S set X. And I've got oh, S and T as set X as well. And my claim is that, um, what's the error? Oh, 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 we do have set insert subset. That's, I don't know why that happened. Let's apply set dot insert subset then. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, what does it say? Yeah, that's exactly what we want. We want to rewrite it. Uh, we want to rewrite this. Well, there we go. That saved me a job. Rewrite set insert subset. And now we've got to prove that U is in the span and Z is in the span. Uh, so that's a split. Uh, and now we have two goals. And Y is U in the span of this. And that's exact HU, basically. We have that little up arrow, but hopefully that won't be any trouble. Let's try exact HU. Yeah, that's worked. So in fact, we don't need this. split. Well, let's leave it. Uh, and now why is Z in this span? Uh, that should be, um, we could, I mean, the simplifier should perhaps know, the simplifier should know that. No, it doesn't know it. Oh, it's not an equality. Um, 
Well, I suppose we could rewrite span le the other way. Uh, and now we've got to prove that the span of z is a subset of the span. Is now we've got to prove the span of some set is contained in the span of some bigger set. And so that would be called span mono. Uh, span mono. And now we've got to prove that, and that might be... Yeah, there we go. The simplifier knows that. Great. So that has done the easy way. So that was this proof here. There. Uh, and now this way. Uh, how to prove that the span of W union Z uh, is a subset of the span of U union Z. And I have this terrible instinct. I just want to sort of run in and uh, try and do it. And we need to use HNU somehow. Uh, I, I suppose what I could have done here, I could have written this well, I don't know, we've done it now. I talked you through it. Uh, let's write this. Let's write this as we go. So how am I going to prove that the span... It, so the same argument, right? We've got to prove that Z is a subset of this and that W is an element of this. Um, let's... Let, I tell you, we, we did this without ever... We never, we never introduced an element. I think my instinct is to use an element for this one. Let's do intro x, uh, intros x, h, x, there. And now we know that x is in the span. I, how are we going to do this? Uh, let's write down the maths proof. Uh, let's say x, let's say x is in the span of w union z. There. And we want, uh, we want x is in the span of u union z there. Uh, so it's in the span of W union Z. So that means we can write, we can write um, X equals kind of A times W uh, plus something, plus something in the span of Z, right? Um, and so we want W, basically we need to prove that W, we need to prove that W is in the, I mean it all, it all boils down to all boils down to uh, W, uh, W being in the span of U union Z. I think once we have that, we're fine. So now, why is that true? Uh, and it's because U is in the span of W union Z. Aha! U is in the span of W union Z. Right, so we can write U, I see, I see. So we can we can write U, uh, U equals B times uh, W plus something plus something in span of Z. Uh, and the point is we know that B is not zero, right? Uh, we know that B is not zero uh, because if B is zero, uh, because if B is zero, then we then uh, this contradicts contradicts uh, uh, this contradicts some um, HNU that's where we need to use HNU and so that means so W okay so now W so W is uh, so W is kind of minus what is it yeah it's sort of minus 1 over B minus 1 over B plus something in spans it whatever that's the idea uh, minus one over b times u. Okay, so we got yeah. That's so. There's there's the there's the maths proof. Uh, right. So let's start on this. Let's start on this uh, hu. So we're in the span of inserts. So hopefully there'll be some rewrite uh, span inserts. Ah, oh, and there's ah oh, it's mem span insert. Right. Let's try that mem span. In, oh, there's three things. Oh, <laughs> ha ha ha! In fact, we can completely. It's there already. Look, if x is in the span of, we can totally cheat. Uh, 
and use mem span insert exchange. Uh, why don't we do that? Uh, it's, is it even a rewrite? Uh, it's not a rewrite. So why don't we do have uh, have h whatever w colon equals mem span insert exchange. Uh, what does this say? It wants that something is in the span of something, and what are we? The conclusion, yeah, we want. I think this is h u the next thing. And now it wants the proof that u is not in the span of z, and that's h n u. Uh, and now we have w's in the span of this. So great. Now that should be the end. So I don't think we do need that. We can do that. We can do it like this. Uh, we don't need the x's at all. Like, this is really quite neat. And so, so now we're going to do rewrite uh, span le again, uh, and then rewrite set dot insert. So I'm just copying the last proof. Um, and so now uh, refine h w underscore there. And now rewrite span le the other way, and that I think is an assumption. Oh no, no, it's it's apply span mono again, uh, and that should be the simplifier. So there we go. Uh, so there's, and I didn't do it like that at all. There, this is the key, key lemma. Yeah, made it all easy. So that's the exchange. Mem span insert exchange. We could see how that was proved. We could, oh no, why can't we? We should be able to. No definition found. Control. What have I done? That's incorrect. There, oh, I've got an, oh, I see. I've got an error. What have I done? Oh, there's a, is it that? Yes. Oh, I see. I deleted. there. Let's try that again. Uh, let's have a look at the proof. Here's the proof. Uh, oh, we want to wait for it to compile. We've got orange bars, but they, you see they're just disappearing. Here we go. Yeah, so it's the same. You see we have this A. I mean, the issue is that we want to use A inverse, um, but we'll need to prove We'll need to prove that a is non is non zero, and 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 the fact that it's non zero contradicts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, very nice. Uh, right. So that's proved the version of standard exchange number that I felt was somehow nat more natural. Uh, and now, of course, we've got to prove this standard exchange lemma. Uh, so we're going to do that by converting this one, right? Convert. Convert standard exchange. Stylus exchange, what do I need for inputs? I need the field, which is K, and I need the vector space. I didn't I didn't really think about this. What? I mean let's let's I mean let's leave it while we're here. We need the field and the vector space, and we need W and Z. So W uh, is gonna be it was V, right? They had a V, but uh, it's probably v dot one or something, right? Because you see this. I tell you what we could do. We could do cases v uh, with w h w, and then we really could use w, because this v. This is one of the things I don't like about this version is we have v in x. So we have v in this x is a x is dot type set v. So x is a um, x is a term, right? So v can't have type x because x is a term. So you have to promote x to a type. Uh, and now this v is actually a pair consisting of a vector and a proof that the vector is in x. So we've just taken it apart now. Uh, converts to, so there's w. What else do we need? So now we need z set v. And what was z? Uh, z was x minus v. So this is um, x, uh, x minus v. How do you do minus? There's set diff or something x minus w, I guess it would be. And now what do we need after that? Uh, we need that u is in the span of something. So that should be, well, that should be hu, but that might give us a, 
that will probably give us an... Uh, yeah, it doesn't like that. So we can't feed in HU yet. We'll have to come back to that later. And then U is not in a span of something. And we, that was HNU. And I wonder if that will give us an error as well. No, that's worked. Uh, and that should be it. Great. So let's see what we've got. So the idea is I'm applying my previous Steinitz exchange lemma. And now we can see... Uh, oh, X is... Uh -huh. So we need to prove that X is, take X and then remove W and then put W back in again. And we have to prove that's X. And that's okay because W is in X. So that goal's provable. And we need to prove that Y is what you get when you insert U into X minus W. But Y is this. Uh, so that should be HY really. Or I mean, it's mathematically HY. And then we've got to prove that U is in this. And, we, and that, was, that should be HU. Ah, so here we're going to have to prove that x, right, so that is going to follow from this. So we, this we need, uh, so this we should prove before we start. So we've got have hx is that x is that. So let's just sorry that and see if we can get home. Um, uh, so now r. Oh, that's interesting. Now we only have two goals. Uh I don't quite know why that's happened. Did we have three goals before? We had three goals. Oh, I see. Lee, Lee must have looked at the tactic state. Uh, convert, maybe I see. Convert somehow filled in. Uh, that's very good of it. Uh, convert filled in the uh, the tactic state. And so now what's that? So now we have two goals. Uh, and the second one should be easy. Uh, the second one is just uh, rewrite hx. And then that becomes an assumption. So R W A H X. That's the quick way to do that. R W A is rewrite and then use the assumption tactic. So now two sorry is left, and this says Y is insert U. I mean this says I want a lemma. I mean if I desympat H Y uh, then X dot is that the same as I'm hoping that x dot diff w is just notation for x. So, oh, it's sudif. Okay. Well, let's let's simpat hy. Oh, let's see. Let's see if the simplifier can do it. Let's do simpa uh, using hy. Didn't do it. That's a, that's a shame. Uh, I see. I've used sudif instead of diff. So I wonder if I can. Does that bother me? How have I ended up using? Oh, that's a great shame. I was hoping this would be easier. So what have we got here? And we've also got the union. Oh dear. HY is a real mess. Can I change? Uh, how have we end? Oh, I see HY, this, yeah, this I got this from the student. No wonder it's horrible. <laughs> Sorry, whoever wrote it. Um, can I? I should. I want to change this. Let me just pin it for a second. Uh, change. This is y equals x set theoretic difference w, uh, and then I want to. I think I want to union it uh, with u. Does that work? Ah, oh, curses! It didn't work. So maybe I'm going to have to use diff. Does that work? What? What have I done? Why is x diff? Maybe I'll do the do the d. The decim shouldn't change anything though. How is that not? Oh, is this? Ah, oh, is it one sort of these things where we don't actually know what this means? Is this u set v? Do I have to do this? No, I don't know what I've done. Let let me um, let's uh, let z z z be this. Just does it compile? Oh, it does compile. Oh, did I, was I changing the wrong thing? Oh yeah, I, I mean, complete fall. The goal is not that, it's at hy. Okay, great, that's worked fine. Uh, and now can I get rid, can I do the diffs as well? Yeah, that's worked fine, great. 
So y is now in a form, I think the simp lemmas uh, use the notation, use the set theoretic difference notation of the union notation. Um, so now can I, now does this work? Simper, uh, simper using hy, that would be nice. Yeah, no, yes, yes. Oh yeah, this is pen. Uh, excellent. So now the simplifier, the point is the simplifier can figure out that y, that hy is, yeah, I wonder how it does it actually, can I squeeze it? Ah, oh, set dot union singleton, whatever that is. Uh, what is it? Check set dot union singleton. Yeah, I see. S yes, union of singleton is is the insert. Okay, great. So that's you see that's uh, if you like the the moral of this is that you sh you should write things in simp normal form. This this kind of dot notation is kind of very appealing because it sort of looks very cool and computer sciencey. But I think for sets. Uh, the simp normal form is just union. Uh, I could probably get rid of that set dot v as well. I was probably that was when I was barking up the wrong tree, wasn't it? So there we go. That's done that, and all we've got left to do um, is this. Sorry, uh, and we still have the horrible. We still have the horrible y. Oh, but that doesn't matter. Wait, no. This. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This has got nothing to do with y. Great. Does the simplifier do this? Uh, Oh, that's interesting. It gets somewhere. Um, oh, come on. So now I need the lemma that says uh, simp hw, maybe we'll do it. Yeah, 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 great. It was painless. Excellent. Uh, so there is the proof of two versions of Steinitz exchange lemma. But you see somehow, yeah, and let me just write. I, I can see the appeal of having it in this form. Uh, but let me show you. Let me. What well, I think the version you, you don't want to you don't want to write it like this. This is the problem. You don't want to do x. Dip, you want to do x minus v, uh, and you you want to use some of the right notation. Uh, x minus v union u. There. That's that's somehow that would have been easier to prove, I think. Uh, well, the first thing you should do is get rid of the. I mean, rewrite H Y, right? I mean, because we don't want the H Y. Uh, and then can we simp this? Yeah, that looks better. And so now we should apply our Steinitz exchange. Now we just do the convert again. This thing here. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. Uh, it didn't like it. We've got no W. Oh, I didn't do the cases. Oh, yeah. The, the, this is still yeah. This is still cases V with WHW. That's still that still shouldn't somehow be there. And now what happens here? Uh, and that one was simp, I think. Oh, simp. You have to tell it that W is in simp HW. And uh, and then this one is convert HU. And then simp hw again. Yeah, so it was quicker to. I had to think less to do that one. Uh, but anyway, there's some uh, versions of the Steinitz exchange now. Thanks very much for watching.